Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is James, I'm a critical care paramedic and today we're going to be talking about external laryngeal manipulation, ELM. Um, this was kind of a video that was requested by a subscriber, so here we are. So what is ELM? So it's external laryngeal manipulation. So it's when we take the larynx of the patient and we push it around, it is improving our view of the trachea, right? So what does this do and what does it mean? So you've probably all heard about the silix maneuver or um, cricoid pressure. Please don't be doing cricoid pressure. I have a video on cricoid pressure. It is completely debunked. Uh, we shouldn't be doing it. But ELM has mixed evidence. If you look at the evidence, some are saying, you know, like it works, some are saying it doesn't work, but there isn't a lot of evidence to say that like it is the thing we should be doing. I have some anecdotal evidence that it definitely works for me. So what are kind of our options? So you've probably heard about burp. So that's backwards, upwards, right pressure. So we take the larynx and we do backwards. So down, backwards, upwards. We push up towards the head and right, burp pressure, right? So what does that do? That pushes the trachea down and into the right, all right? So while you are intubating, you are intubating with your left hand and you're looking in through the right-hand side of the mouth. So you push down, up and right, you're pushing the trachea hopefully in line with what the person who is doing the intubation can see. So that's one option of um, ELM. The other option of ELM is just when you take your fingers and you apply gentle pressure to just the whole neck and you push down. Right? And what that does is it lowers the view, and so it can take a grade four view and turn it into a grade three view. I'll drop some of that evidence into the comments below. But you can take this and you just literally lean over and you can apply gentle pressure onto the trachea or the neck of the patient and you push it down. Um, similar to when we are trying to intubate um, a pediatric or um, a newborn, we can use our uh, pinky and we can apply gentle pressure uh, which can help us with our view. Ideally, what this should do is that, um, and I actually read this evidence, it's quite interesting, is that they're saying that when you are doing ELM, you should be standing on the right-hand side of the patient. It is more effective. And that what actually works, works best is that if the person who is intubating, so you're standing here trying to intubate, you take someone else's hand and you are then moving it, right? So you are guiding someone else's hand to the right position and then you can tell them where to stop and then that's where they can hold rather because they can't see what you can see, right? The other thing and the conversation I was having with the subscriber was that can it cause someone to vomit, right? So if you are doing this on a patient who is in cardiac arrest or who has been RSI and therefore paralyzed with rock or sucks or something like that, um, they aren't going to vomit because they can't vomit, right? Um, the muscles aren't really functioning. But in someone who is not paralyzed or is not dead, um, pushing on their trachea is going to apply pressure to all of these structures that are in the neck. And so there's all of these um, points in the neck that could trigger vomiting, right? So if we do apply pressure like this and they aren't, like I said, dead or paralyzed, there is a possibility of inducing vomiting. Even when it comes to the silic maneuver, so the cricoid pressure, they found that when you actually released cricoid pressure, it would induce vomiting. Once again, that is what ELM is. So guys, if you enjoyed this, please let me know, like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions, drop them below. And if you did enjoy this, you should check out my advanced airway video. Um, you, you, really, you probably really enjoy that.